So I've messed around that I think enough for now. I'm gonna have to let it dry before I can do anything else with it and then I could probably touch up a few bits. Maybe even if there's some parts that stay wet, some parts that dry, I may be able to get a few more like cauliflowery look bits to it here and there. Um, so here we are from top to bottom of our background. It's kind of organic looking, it's kind of cool. It's not quite what I expected it to be, but it's not bad. And I'm going to, um, I think, just to help me out with a few spots that didn't blossom as much as I would have liked, I'm gonna put a little bit of bits of sea salt and stuff in it to see if I can't get it. Now that one might be too dry for it to work. There's a couple spots that are still a little wet that just didn't, didn't do much exciting. So I'm thinking maybe I can make it do something exciting by adding my little bits of sea salt. So we'll see. Like I said, some parts of it might be a little bit too dry for that to work. And some parts might not. There's only one way to find out. If it doesn't work, I haven't really wasted anything by doing it. The yellow part's okay, I think. Maybe this blue, it's kind of boring. Overall though, I think the effect is going to be kind of pretty. Um, I may go back in once it's dry with the dry brush and just kind of define some shadows or things in amongst it just to try and make them look a little more 3D. Um, but we'll wait and we'll see how the uh, how the salt affects it for a little bit. And um, I will go work on editing the rest of this video from earlier. So I shall return. Alright, so as you can see we're back again. And all my, uh, my background bits have dried. Um, I did notice I put on my salt a little too late to have much of an effect. So I brushed that all off already it makes kind of a mess. I don't know if you can see if I get a little closer. The only parts that it really had much of a effect, there's a little bit here where it uh, pulled a little bit. There's a few spots here and there where you can just see little tiny little spots from the salt. But it didn't really do a lot. Um, as I said, I think I was a little late putting it on. There wasn't a lot of water left for it to pull from. Oh, I missed a spot. So that wasn't overly successful, and it didn't really change the look of what I've done so far, the way I was hoping that it would. So what I need to do here now is I need to make some sort of depth within the coral. And the only thing I could think to do is to add a little more stronger bits of this color. Um, now I also think, if I can figure out where I put it, that this would be a good time for me to erase some of my lines because I did have some lines here and there um, just to give me an idea where I wanted my coral to be and I don't think I really need them anymore I think I've got a general idea but I don't want to get it so there's so much paint on top of the lines that I can't get rid of them later I don't know if you can see from there what's going on. I don't know how much of it you can see. A little bit of the color is coming off. But I'm going to add to that in a minute anyways. I just don't want to have pencil bits later that are so much harder to get off because I've got it all finished exactly the way I like it. That would be, oh wow, that one really came off. That one really came off. I'm still debating whether I like this paint that I got. I bought Artist Loft Pan Set. And sometimes the colors are quite pretty. There's more options of colors than there was in my travel set that I had before. But when I try to make it nice and strong, it seems to layer on pigment and then it's powdery. Like it's, it's like there's a chalk on top of the page which is probably what's coming off on my eraser. I'm not overly fond of the way it comes off looking. Um, if you watched one of the other videos, I did a video where I tried to use the frisket um, earlier on, 
and of course you have to kind of rub at it to get it to come off and when I did rub at it the the powdery chalky part that I was talking about came off on my fingers and then rubbed on the pages parts of the white page that I had wanted to keep white and I got really frustrated about the whole thing which is part of the reason I went to more expensive paper because it does kind of give me a little more freedom um, with regard to not pulling off the top bit of the page when I pull the frisket off but I also um, I may need at some point to go to a more expensive paint right now I'm because I'm still I'm still kind of figuring out what I'm doing um, I'm certainly not by any means sure of what I'm doing in some cases when it comes to watercolor still and so I'm tootling around with the inexpensive paint um, and so um, it, it probably isn't helping my technique any to have less expensive paint but at least I feel like I can kind of waste it and play around without um, without worry it doesn't make me feel guilty to use a bunch of paint which it might if the paint itself cost me a small fortune so I'm going to see, I'm just starting with the purple because it's a nice strong color and I figure it'll give me a good idea if it's going to work. And I'm going to try and lay in some little curly cued edges and shadows and things. So I'm putting it right now along the edge because I'm thinking that the edge has shadows under it. So if I kind of create the shadows underneath, maybe it'll make the rest look like it's a little closer. We'll see. Um, I've only been snorkeling in any kind of deep water once or twice. Well, once for deep water. The rest of the time it's been kind of an offshore thing, so I haven't got a lot of experience with coral, but it does have very strong textures. And I've got a dog hair on the end of my paintbrush. It does have very strong textures because it is very, a very varied shape. So I think that will actually make a big difference once I get this. If the color when it dries shows up the way I think it will. And I'm just going to be a little bit more free and easy with this one because I don't want to take forever. So this is the plan here is to just kind of add some some darker shades of the same colors over top of what I've already done. I'm not sure if I'm going to decide to blend some of it as I go or not, but since some of them have more than one color in that area, it probably will get a chance to blend a little more. And so, so it doesn't take forever. I'm just going to uh, go ahead and speed the next bit up. And then we'll come back and we'll see how it looks and we'll decide what we want to do with the rest of the background. I do have a lot of my, um, my bubble dots still in a white area, which means it's not actually protecting it from any kind of paint. So I may decide to put kind of a light wash in amongst the coral between the coral and the turtle just to give it some sort of watery feel but we'll see
All right, so here's what we've ended up with. It's still wet, so of course we won't have any idea what it's gonna look like until it dries a bit better. But actually, I'm quite happy with the way it's coming out. I hope that when it dries, it does give different shades and tones of each color on top of each other, um, because I think that's gonna give it some depth. Um, the more I play with putting colors close together, the more I have to worry about being mud. So I kind of like the idea that at the moment, if I'm layering on top of itself, it's just going to make different tones of the same color without me worrying. So I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to come back to it, as I always do. And then I think I will decide what to do about the white area. Um, in the other style of turtle that I did, I complained that I should have left more white area. But in this one, again, the fact that I have these little bubbles that aren't touching anything kind of bothers me a little. So I think I may add a little bit of a wash. What I'm trying to decide here is whether I should um, make that a blue wash. Of course, it's water. It makes sense for it to be blue. Um, in the picture, if you have a chance to look back at the picture, everything is a green tone. But I've obviously gone well away from that by putting in all my bright colored coral. So it's kind of something I'm going to have to decide. And I may just pick a nice pale greeny blue color and just kind of put little bits of wash here and there just enough to give the impression of water. Um, I'm just trying to worrying about whether I can do that while not touching up against my coral. So we'll see. I'm going to think about it, see how brave I feel and I'll be back. Okay, we're back again and we're on the scary part now. We're going to do the background wash. And what I've kind of decided is I'm going to work one little area at a time and spread out because it absolutely has to stay wet for this to work. Um, I may have to keep re-wetting, so it's going to be a very light wash because there won't be much pigment in it by the time I'm done. So I have two colors mixed up. Basically, I've got a blue-green that I'm going to use for the water area, and I've got the darkest blue that I have, and I think I'm going to touch a little bit of that behind the coral along the edge to try and give it some depth. So that's why I need it to be wet, because I need it to flow into the green naturally. So I'm gonna speed the next part up, so wish me luck. I haven't figured out which brush I wanna use for this, probably my big one for the wash itself. I may use a smaller one for the edging. And we're gonna take a deep breath and dive in and hope that it works out.
I came home, but I'm not sure how I feel about being on a quick dad and settles for that long. Right. So it's a little while later and our background has dried and I think overall it turned out fairly well. It does give me some nice variations of color, a little bit darker around the coral and stuff. Um, I tried to get in amongst the coral in some places where there was white showing. Um, it's not perfect. There's a couple areas where part of it dried faster than the others. There's actually one area that's still wet down here. And so I do have a bit of a cauliflower edge here, a hard edge. Um, and I'm going to try and touch that up a little bit. I just want to try and soften that a little tiny bit. See if I can soften it a little tiny bit, I guess, is what I'm saying. And so I'm just going to wet those edges again and see if I can't get them to blend. For some reason, there's water all over my counter and I just stuck my stomach in it. That's lovely. But overall, I think... I'm fairly happy with it. Um, my husband, of course, I went and showed it to him on my way by, and he uh, informed me that coral looks nothing like this. <laughs> so after all that work, go figure. Um, I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. I'm not sure if I'm happy with my coral, and um, whether or not he says it looks like coral, I, I kind of think it does. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm happy with the fact that it doesn't have as much depth to it as I would have liked it to have. I'm just going to see if I can rub a little bit at these hard edges and get them to spread out. I don't know if that's going to work or not. Overall, like I said, I'm happy with the water and how the water turned out. Um, we won't find out about the entire picture and how that looks until I get the rest of the frisket, because I still have frisket on this guy. And now hopefully you can see what I meant by my little my bubble dots because they will now show up. The background isn't dark by any means. It's a nice light colored blue. And actually now that it's dried, the blue green looks to me a lot less blue green than it did when it was wet. So it's not really a bad thing. It does have a bit of a green tint to it. So to me that's ocean water color is a nice bluish green. So that's, oh wait, there's another one down here. This is still kind of wet down here, so that's probably why this one is kind of cauliflowerish. So I don't know, as I said with the coral, whether I'm going to try anything else with it, but if I do, I think it might be with my markers. I think I may go in and just add little edges and black areas. Um, because I may also do that with some of the turtle itself up around here where there were some issues with his neck that I didn't like. Um, so I may just decide afterwards to get out that marker and touch up anything I don't like with the marker. I don't know. In the meantime, we're almost done and I'm fairly happy with my little sea turtle guy. And since most of it is dry, I'm going to see, and this is the test. This is going to be the test of my more expensive paper because this frisket has been on here for about a week now from start to finish. Um, I drew them out and I put the frisket on them. And then I got really nervous about doing them. So I kind of sat them there and looked at them until I got brave enough one day to give it a shot. So it did sit. And so far, so good. Normally, with the cheaper paper, I had a lot of the top surface of the paper come off when I went to remove the frisket. So far, this is not doing that. So Now, this is where I had an issue with my last turtle, is that the finer areas had too much white when I was done, and I ended up going back in. And um, <clears throat> filling in those areas, making them a little bit bigger, the colored areas bigger. So there was less white and more color. So I guess we'll decide when we're all done taking it off whether or not I need to do that again. 
but at least I'm happy that it's coming off fairly easily. I've had some real, I don't know, love-hate relationship with my frisket. It does, it does what it's supposed to do. You have to give it that. It is nice and white. So it does save you the worry of trying to butt up against things without getting color in them. <clears throat> but sometimes it's a real pain to work with. And it does, it comes out very thick and gloopy. So it is kind of hard to get a really fine line with it. I did actually, because I wanted really fine lines, I went in with a toothpick to see if I could dip it in my toothpick and then draw with the toothpick. But it doesn't actually... It, I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe it. It didn't stick to the toothpick well enough to drip off in any amount. So I would have been there forever doing a dab spot, dab spot, dab spot. And it dries fairly quickly, so... I decided that I would have to get my tiniest little brush and I was a little sad about that because usually once you put the frisket on the brush the brush is wrecked um, <clears throat> the paint doesn't or the the gluey part of the frisket doesn't really come out of the brush and I used it and I rinsed it a lot as I was working with it to try and keep it but it does still have a, a harder texture now the, the frisket kind of gets in between all the bits of the brush, the strands, and kind of gloops them together so it's never as soft and absorbent as it was before you started. So I have in effect ruined one of my nice thin brushes to do this, but it was the only way I could think of to get my areas fairly thin. See now again I've got a little bit of green coming off, I just noticed I just put it into my wet spot from his shell. I'm going to have to be careful not to rub with that finger. It's the paint, not the frisket, that's the problem there. It's, it's got that chalky texture I was telling you about before that sits on top of the paint after it's dry, and that's what's coming off on my finger. Maybe I'll just wash that finger off a little bit before I accidentally do what I said I didn't want to do. I'm quite liking the way the shell's coming out. The shell's coming out nicely. The, uh, I can never, I haven't figured out yet whether to call these arms or fins or, or what to call these. I really should find that out. I haven't decided whether I like the way they're coming out because there is a lot of more white space probably than there should be. Did I miss anything there? I missed that one. And like I said before, you can feel the difference in the frisket. It's got a rubbery feel to it. Like if you've got your, <clears throat> excuse my voice, <coughs> craft glue. So you could just kind of feel where it's different than the rest of the paint. And then you have to be able to get a hold of some of it so that you can pull it. I think that's all. There's a little spot right there. some areas here. I guess that's the only one. And then it's just a case of getting rid of our bubbles that I was so worried about not getting to see. So there's a couple bubbles there. There's a couple here. When you were watching the video you'll notice I expanded my this original coral was 
a little ways farther back. I expanded it specifically so I could get those white dots there. Now I'm thinking it looks funny because you can't tell they're bubbles. It looks like I just didn't paint part of the coral. Possibly not my smartest idea. And the same with these. But I suppose it never really hurts to have some nice white areas in amongst everything else. Anything in there? Nope. A couple of these guys down here. Oh, and this part's still wet, so I don't know if I should do that or not, but I'm going to because I'm doing all the rest. And if it bleeds a bit, I guess there's not much I can do about it. That part there pulled off a little bit, probably because it was wet. I should have done it when it was wet, but I'm not that patient. I don't want to come back and remember to do this again later. So, I think... I think that's all my fruit skip. So, as you can see, not too bad at all, really. Turned out probably much nicer than my first turtle attempt did. It is more realistic than my first turtle attempt was. I'm fairly happy with it. So I'm going to let it dry again, see if my cauliflower bits went away, and then decide what to do with my coral. Alright then, this should hopefully be the very last section of this video because I'm actually pretty happy with the way it dried. Um, most of the little bit of curly cue that I had, the hard edges, um, I managed to soften out. There's a couple still here and there that you can see. But all together, I think it gives a very nice kind of a light watery look. It's got some color variations in it. Um, the only thing that doesn't quite stand out as well as I'd like is some of the, the shapes in the coral. So I decided that I am going to go ahead with my markers, or my pens I should say, and I'm going to touch up the parts I don't like. Um, so I'm going to take a second before I do, and I'm just going to uh, do a little, little erasing here on the parts that I sketched out before I started, because I do have some pencil lines here and there on the shell that I don't need anymore and again like it was doing before it might pull off a little bit of the color from the paint doing this but I'm not too worried about it and then um, I think the areas that I want to put my pen onto are probably going to be the very outside edge of the shell because it has a very definite edge to it. Oops. Oh, there go all my brushes. There's a very definite edge to it, so I want to make sure I get that. And the same with the outside of the... So I don't know what to call this. I don't know if it's a fin or a leg or what it is. These bits. Those things. I've been saying that through this whole video. I don't know what to call that. I never thought to look it up. Anyway, so I want to put some um, pencil around the outside edges of those areas. And I think I'm going to, I you could see a little better, I don't know, the little bubbles that I made. They do stand out now, but I think I just want to give them a little bit more definition. So I'm probably going to touch that up with my pens too. And what I'm using, um, same ones I used for the other ones, these, because they're India ink, they are waterproof. So I could have used it to draw out the turtle in the first place if I'd wanted to. Um, but, I, you know, I didn't really know how I wanted it to look at the time. And I kind of like being able to finish up afterwards. Because that way I don't have to worry quite so much about following my lines perfectly. I know that I can touch up whatever it is afterwards. Now, I had said earlier, too, that I thought I might want to touch up some of this area, but I actually kind of like it now that I've got it all dry and everything looks all right. I think once I um, define better the outside edge of the shell and the outside edge of this area here, that it will look quite nice. I mean, the color, I don't know, it's not, it's not quite what I expected, but it does have kind of a turtley look to it. And here I am putting a shadow on there. Anyways, I was trying to show you these pens is what I was doing. So I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Um, 
Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell pens. And I've got four different sizes here, but I will probably just use the fine. The small one's a little bit too small for what I want. And this is almost like a Sharpie marker. So I think I'm just going to stick with the fine. And I'm just going to outline a few things and make sure that my, um, my bubbles have definition. And then I'm going to probably just add a little bit of curly Q edges on parts of my coral. And I think that that will make me happy. And that'll be that. And I'll actually have this video complete. Yay! Which is good timing because I'm going on vacation soon. And it's kind of nice to have my project all finished up and online ready to go before I take off. So I'm going to um, speed up the next bit. So I will stop talking and then we will see how it looks at the end.